whole week. I know my voice is not so good, but how's everybody doing today? Good. All right. So I want to welcome everybody. My name is Angela Gonsalves. I'm going to be your MC today, and I'd like to welcome everybody to the fifth annual Martin Luther King Day in Brockton. Let's try that again. Hold on. When I say that, we're going to go, yes, great, wonderful. Let's try it again. Ready? Welcome to the fifth annual Martin Luther King Day in Brockton. Okay, good. I was getting to get a little nervous that you guys weren't as excited as I was. So let me ask you a question. Why, why are we even here? MLK Day. MLK Day. Yes, why are we here? Celebrate. Celebrate? Okay, great. And who are we celebrating? Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. Good. And... Would it, what if we just stayed home? No. no. Why? Why Why can't we just stay home? Why do we have to come here and celebrate Martin Luther King? Anybody have an answer for birthday. Because it's his birthday, but why else? Because he's important. Why is he important? Yes. Yes, look at this, because he changed the world. So we're going to hear a little bit more about everybody's favorite, Martin Luther King. Are you guys ready for today? Yes! Good. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start uh, with the rest of our program. So please, could I call up St. Edith Stein Boy Scouts for the presentation of the colors? Could I have everybody please rise? Next up, I'd like to call up Jesley DeVega for the singing of the American National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting Thank you, Justly. And I just want to say, this year, am I right? Perfect, yes or no? That national anthem, perfect, yes or no? Give Justly a round of applause. That's not easy to do. You guys can all take a seat. For, I need um, some volunteers. Any, any brave souls? 
Okay, everybody raising your hand, please come here. Okay, yep, stand right here, face this way. Okay, now, can you guys tell me what you guys do every day in school when you go like this? The Pledge of Allegiance, great. So actually, we're gonna go ahead and do the Pledge of Allegiance, that was my mistake. Everybody please stand again. Get in some exercise for today. Okay, and following these, are you guys ready? Okay, and we're gonna start. We're gonna face the flag this way. Ready? And just like in school, we're gonna start with you guys with the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Good job, guys. You guys can have a seat. <clears throat> Before continuing on with um, the rest of our program, I just want to make known some of the government officials that we have present today and just thank them for coming. First, we have, oh, and when I call your name, just raise your hand. Take a so everybody can see you. We have Jerry Cassidy, state rep. We have the state senator, Mike Brady. We have our very own former mayor and current counselor at large, Moses Rodriguez. And we also have Shirley Azak, our council president. And if I could ask, Shirley Azak, could you come up and say a few words? Well, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. This is one of my, um, actually, favorite celebrations that um, Councilor Rodriguez started, and it's because we actually celebrate Martin Luther King on his birthday. Even though it's Martin Luther King weekend, the, today is his birthday, and um, it's my honor to be here to celebrate with you. I know it's a wonderful program that's put together, and um, I have to tell you, I live by his quotes and his words, and may his um, words live on forever with us. So thank you. We also have here present today with us the president of the Brockton area, NAACP, Phyllis Ellis. <laughs> Phyllis, I know you're no shy person to the microphone. Would you mind coming and saying uh, just a few words for us? Please, Madam President. <laughs> Good afternoon. I am glad to be here. This is actually my second year coming, and I will be coming for the next years. Um, I'm glad we're here to celebrate Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He had a dream. Some of his dreams have been realized, but we still have a long way to go. We made a lot of progress, but we still have a long way to go. And I don't think we should just celebrate his birthday on his birthday. We should be living his dream throughout the entire year. So with that in mind, let's do that, okay? And thank you for having me. Thank you, Phyllis. And next up, I'd like to call up, on behalf of the Cape Verde Association of Brockton, Council uh, Board Member Joe Miranda for a few words. Just a little bit of a height difference. I always come down. Good evening, everybody. Um, on behalf of Nancy, who is the president of the uh, association, she couldn't be here. Just want to welcome everyone. 
uh, for this beautiful celebration, and thank you for being here. Nice and sweet, thank you, John. So with the start, I would like to call up some of the youth in our community and some of the kids that participate at the Cave Verde Association. Um, if I could have you guys all line up here, uh, they're going to be reading poems um, about Martin Luther King. So we have reading poems, Justly De Vega, Ricky Mendez, Tiago Tavares, Tiago Oliveira, Marissa Rodriguez, and Isaiah Pires. So I believe um, with these poems, we're going to listen to all the poems and go ahead and give them a round of applause at the end, OK? Yeah, I guess in the beginning at the end, give a round of applause. For A dream can come true. Martin Luther King had a dream for people everywhere. He wanted them to get along and show how much they care by helping one another and by always being fair. So remember Martin Luther King and help his dream come true by always treating others as you'd want them to treat you. Dr. King's dream. Treat people kindly, do what is fair. Work for all people, show that you care. These are the ways, if we work as a team, to remember the man who said, I have a dream. <clears throat> Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Dr. King wished, Dr. King prayed, that one day all people would live on Unafraid, Dr. King cared for blacks and whites. He wanted for all people to share equal rights. Little Martin Luther King. Little Martin Luther King sat in church one day listening to his father preach and listening to him pray. One day I'll talk like that, he said, and say those big words too. I'll make folks feel good inside. Little Martin's words came true. The dream of Martin Luther King will happen in some far off spring. When winter ice and snow are gone, one day the dreamer in gray dawn will awaken in a blinding night where hawk and dove in silent flight brush wings together on a street still thundering with ghostly feet. And soul will dance and soul will sing and march with Martin Luther King. King had a dream. Martin Luther King had a dream. Yes, he did. Martin Luther King had a dream. Indeed, he did. Martin Luther King, we dream. He dreamed we live with us as brothers, having love for one another, and his dream is still alive through you and me. So, I just want to say, about 10 years ago, right, we had a priest here at St. Edith's Sign who loved to clap. And since him, it's just become like this epidemic of clapping. So, let's try it out. Because I know they did a good job and they deserve a, a very loud round of applause. So, yes. You can never have too many claps, right? Am I right? Yeah. So moving forward, I'd like to call up our keynote speaker for this year. Our keynote speaker is Willie Wilson. And 
I know he's going to come and do a better introduction than I ever could. So I just want to say Willie Wilson was a former Broughton High School teacher and historian. And without saying any further, can we give him a round of applause as he comes up? Oh, it's very nice to uh, be here this afternoon, and uh, uh, this place brings back memories. And uh, for a few years now, uh, Moises was trying to get me to speak, and I was always doing something. And uh, this year, when he called, I said, uh, I'm going to start the new decade off correctly, and uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to come. So it's, it's nice to be here. Uh, Basically, what I'm, what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about Dr. King. And uh, I want to echo what Phyllis said. Uh, I enjoy uh, the fact that here at St. Edith Stein, uh, you know, you decided to actually have an event on the day of his birthday. But also what Phyllis, Phyllis said is, uh, you know, all the things that he talked about, that he uh, preached about, we want to continue and, and do on a daily basis. So uh, what I'd like to do is, uh, first of all, I want to call your attention uh, to uh, some of the work that's on the wall. Behind me, uh, there are statements by students from uh, the Edward Gilmore Elementary School, grades K through five. And so these students were assigned grades K through five what does uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday mean to you? And uh, uh, before the day is finished, I, I'd like you to uh, go and visit and see what some of those statements said. And some of them uh, had said, I, I want to be a better person. Others said, I want to be a policeman. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. Um, one student wrote, I want to be scholar of the month. Uh, and, and the aspirations of these young people are very important because one of the reasons why we're doing activities like this, we had the NAACP breakfast, uh, is to uh, channel and model as adults for our children what it is to be a better person and what that, the things that Dr. King strived for. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, some aspects of his life. I, I was very fortunate uh, because 34 years ago, when the holiday was made national, uh, I was the department head of Chapter 636 Multicultural Education in the Talented and Gifted program for the Brockton Public Schools. So my office was charged with preparing materials to distribute to all, at that time, 26 schools in terms of having uh, materials for teachers to use with uh, uh, students. And uh, uh, the late Coretta Scott King, she, uh, she established a foundation in Atlanta, Georgia, and, and she disseminated materials nationally so that all 50 states and five U.S. territories would be prepared to uh, observe his holiday. Uh, there are many, many legacies concerning the late Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. The spiritual uh, or religious legacy, the intellectual legacy, the social justice legacy, just to name uh, three. And uh, what I would like to do is talk about uh, some of those as it relates to us. Uh, Claiborne Carson is the director, uh, previous director of the King Papers Project and the Martin Luther King uh, Research and Education Institute based in, uh, at Stanford University in California. The project is continuing uh, its goal of publishing a definitive, annotated, 14-volume scholarly edition of the papers of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Uh, as a teacher at Brockton High and at Stonehill College and Bridgewater State College, uh, many times I would arrange uh, field trips uh, and my students, uh, I would take them to Boston. We actually, the place where he lived on Mass Ave, we would go by that brownstone which has a, a plaque. Uh, it was in Boston where he met Coretta Scott King. She was a student at the New England uh, Conservatory of Music 
and they dated, he was a student at Boston University. So it, it, it's important uh, because Boston has a connection for Dr. King when he came here to do his, uh, his PhD, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Uh, born in 1929, uh, he was born Michael Luther King. He later changed the name to Martin. Uh, Martin spent his formative years uh, in the Williams King family home at 501 Auburn Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. At age five, he questioned his parents about the numerous people standing in bread lines during the Depression. He was born in 1929, and when he was five years old in 1934, as a five-year-old, he was impacted by what he saw in terms of people who were hungry, people who were homeless, people who needed clothing. And he actually asked his, his parents about that, and it made an indelible mark in his, uh, in his memory. In 1941, at age 15, after winning first place in the Black Elks Oratorial Contest, he went on to compete in the regional contest in Dublin, Georgia. 90 miles from Atlanta. He won second place for his delivery, and, and the title of his, his presentation was The Negro in the Constitution. Uh, right now we have before us an impeachment trial that will begin tomorrow, and even as a young student at 15, Dr. King, he, was, he, he knew the Constitution front and back. Those of you who remember his I Have a Dream speech from 1964, 63, he, he, he alludes to the Constitution. Martin's mother, Alberta Williams King, told Martin about slavery and how it ended the Civil War. And she tried to explain the divided system of the South, the segregated schools, the segregated restaurants, theaters, housing, uh, the white and quote unquote colored signs on drinking fountains, waiting rooms, laboratories, uh, and that she explained to him it was a social condition and not part of the natural order. Martin said that the first 25 years of his life were very comfortable years. If he had a problem, he could always call daddy. My father never made more than an ordinary salary, but the secret was that he knew the art of saving and budgeting. He, was all, he always had the sense enough not to live beyond his means. So for this reason, he was able to provide us with the basic necessities of life with little strain. I went right through school and never had to drop out of work or anything. You know, uh, every I don't make New Year's resolutions, but every year I say to myself, I want to live within my, my means and stay within my seams. It's always a challenge, but um, even at this young age, I want, us, I want you to understand, even as these boys and girls are here today, uh, you heard them pledge, you heard them sing the national anthem, that even as a young boy, he was struck by inequalities and the desire to make a better life for himself and those around him. On September 14, 1948, King entered the Crozer Theological Seminary in Chester, Pennsylvania, where he embarked on a serious intellectual quest for a method to eliminate social evil. He felt that the Christian ethic of love was confined to individual uh, relationships. I want to repeat that. He felt that the Christian ethic of love was confined to individual relationships. He couldn't see how it could work uh, uh, in social conflict. In the spring of 1950, he traveled to Philadelphia to hear a sermon by Dr. Mordecai Johnson, president of Howard University, who had just returned from a trip to India. In his sermon, he spoke of the life and teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. Dr. King found that the sermon was so profound and so electrifying that at its conclusion, he bought a half dozen books of Gandhi's lives and works. Uh, so this is, this is 1950 where he, this whole issue of, of nonviolence was impacted. I also should like to mention that Dr. King was a lover of classical music. He loved symphony, he loved opera, and I think it, he loved that even before he met Coretta Scott, but she was also a lover of classical music and that was one of the things they had in common as they dated before they married. Uh, Dr. King was struck by the concept of satagraha, which means the truth force or love force. 
He realized that the Christian doctrine of love operating through the Gandhian method of nonviolence was one of the most potent weapons available to oppress people in their struggle for freedom. On May 8th, 1951, he was awarded a Bachelor of Divinity degree from Croza and decided to pursue a doctorate in systematic theology from Boston University. As a young man, and I'm quoting him, I quote, as a young man with most of my life ahead of me, I decided early to give my life to something eternal and absolute, not to these little gods that are here today and gone tomorrow, but to God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm not going to put my ultimate faith in those little gods that can be destroyed in the atomic age, but the God who has been our help in ages past and our hope for years to come and our shelter in the time of storm and our eternal home. That's the God that I'm putting my ultimate faith in. The God that I'm talking about this morning, and I'm quoting him, is the God of the universe and the God that will last through the ages. If we are to go forward this morning, we've got to go back and find that God. That is the God that demands and commands out of ultimate allegiance. If we are to go forward, we must go back, rediscover these precious values that are all reality hinges on moral foundations that are all reality has spiritual control, end of quote. So one of the things that uh, I'm always amazed about him and about his life, I was privileged, uh, I grew up in Brockton, went to uh, the Sprague and Payne Elementary Schools, went to East Junior High, which is now East Middle, went to Brockton High, and I graduated, went to Boston College. And, uh, and when I was in, at Boston College, I met uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend Michael Haynes, who was the minister of the 12th Baptist Street Church. And he was a friend of Dr. King's. And when Dr. King uh, came to Boston, many times he would preach there at the 12th Baptist Church uh, in Roxbury. And I was always amazed, people who had met him, my cousin had met him, she was a school teacher, how uh, down to earth he was and, uh, and just a man of the people. And this stems from his belief that, and he believed it, black, brown, yellow, or white, you had a right because you were God's children and there was equality under the sun. What he believed is the Constitution needed to meet that spiritual equality. In January of 1952, he met Coretta, Coretta Scott King, a student at the New England Conservatory I mentioned earlier. They were married June 18, 1953, in Marion, Alabama, by Dr. King Sr. They had four children, Martin Luther III, Dexter Scott, Yolanda Denise, and Bernice Albertine. After being in school 21 years without a break and completing the residential requirements for his PhD, King began to consider various jobs. These included various pastorates as well as a teaching post, a deanship, and another administrative position at three different colleges. On January 24, 1954, he delivered a trail sermon at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. His sermon topic was the three dimensions of a complete life. The length of life, I quote him, as we shall use it, is not its duration, not its longevity. It is rather the push of life forward to its personal ends and ambitions. It is the inward concern for one's personal welfare. The breath of life is the outward concern for the welfares of others. The height of life is the upward reach toward God. These are the three dimensions of life. And without the due development of all, no life becomes complete. Life at its best is a great triangle. At one angle stands the individual person. At the other angle stands other persons. And at the top stands God. Unless these three are uh, uh, concatenated, working harmoniously together in a single life, that life is incomplete. On April, four, end of quote, on April 14th, King accepted the call to the Dexter's pa pastorate and on May 2nd delivered his first sermon as minister. I want to explain to you, he never had a break. When he moved to Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, he had just sent in his, his last draft of his completed PhD thesis to Boston University, and of course that was the week that uh, 
that uh, Rosetta actually uh, refused to get off the bus. So he never, all his life, it was always a push, a push. Even Coretta, if you look at his memoirs, she's always telling him to relax, to rest, um, take some family vacation time and so forth, but he always felt this need to push on. Uh, he told the people at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church, I come to you with nothing so special to offer. I have no pretense of being a great preacher or even a profound scholar. I certainly have no pretense to infallibility that is reserved for the height of the divine, rather than the depth of the human. At every moment, I am conscious of my finiteness, knowing so clearly that I had never been bathed in the sunshine of omniscience or baptized in the waters on, of um, um, omnipotence. I come to you with the only the claim of being a servant of Christ and a feeling of dependence on his grace for my leadership. I come with a feeling that I have been called to preach and to lead God's people. I have felt like Jeremiah, and he quoted, the word of God is in my heart like burning fire shut up in my bones, end of quote. I have felt like Amos, that when God speaks, who can be prophecy? prophecy. I have felt with Jesus that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to set at liberty those who bruised. So today we come to honor, to remember this man, but in many ways it's, it's also to reflect on what we can do to further his dream. Uh, Brockton is the only city in Plymouth County uh, there are 351 cities and towns in this commonwealth, and uh, it's a wonderful place to live. I'm a, as a native Brocktonian, I love it. it. But we, to make a better Brockton, we have to make a better self. And just as these children sang, as they pledged, as they wrote some of these uh, wonderful statements and desires and aspirations on the wall, we as adults have to do the same. And so my, my charge to you is, uh, as Dr. King has said, uh, we need to work together. And working together means listening to people, sometimes things that we disagree with, but to be civil. And with that, I want to say uh, thank you for having me. It's been an honor. And I have to, I have to say that the children have been an excellent audience. I mean, they were so well behaved. But thank you, and I enjoy uh, speaking with you afterwards. Thank you again, Mr. Wilson. Can I have another round of applause for him, please? I know you're a historian at heart, but I learned a lot of things from that. Did you guys learn a lot of things about Martin Luther King? Yes. yes. I think the one that, that, um, that stayed with me the most was the classical music. I love classical music. Um, and later we will be hearing some music too. It won't be classical, but um, you guys stay tuned for that a little later. As we continue with our program, um, I just want to make uh, known another government official that's here, Carlos De Silva, Vice Chair of the Hingham School Committee. Just give a wave. As well as our very own Robert Sullivan. Give him a round of applause. The Mayor of Brockton. Bob, can you come up and just say a few words? Just say hello. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? So this is what Brockton's all about. And first of all, I want to thank uh, Father for letting us be here at St. Edith Stein from the Tri Parish. I want to thank the Cape Verdean Association and my dear friend and our uh, former mayor and now our good friend back on the City Council, Moises Rodriguez. Um, and I want to thank every Brocktonian for being here and specifically the boys and girls. This is the next generation of the City of Champions. I want to give you all a round of applause.
Today is a very, very special day. Uh, we honor uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., and we learn from him. And the best way to carry on Dr. King's legacy is to work together, and the key word is together. If we don't work together, we will not have a better Brockton. But as the mayor, for the next two years, I pledge you we need to come together as one. We are Brocktonians. We need to come together to have a safer community, an economic thriving community, and a community of all inclusiveness. So I am pledging that today to honor Dr. King, and I want to thank Mr. Wilson, who is definitely uh, a great Brocktonian, a great teacher. And I, too, went to Boston College. And in junior year of Boston College, I did a semester in Washington, D.C. And I had the opportunity to have lunch with a civil act activist named Julian Bond. And Julian Bond met, in 1960, Dr. Martin Luther King. And what he told me when I had lunch from that day is, what Dr. King shared is love, inclusiveness, and coming together. In Brockton, we have to learn from our struggles. We've had errors. We've had wrongdoings. We need to learn from those and build upon those. And I am welcoming you to Brockton. I will always embrace you. I will always have my open arms. I'm going to work with my dear friends on the City Council and School Committee. And we will work together for the young boys and girls. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan. And next, I'd like to call up our very own, as Bob said, the former mayor and our current city councilor at large, Mr. Oh, the Honorable <laughs> Moses Rodriguez. Thank you very much. Um, I am glad um, that you all came out today to help us celebrate MLK Day. I know that we should be celebrating it every day, but what's important is at least to celebrate it one day. And that's one of the reasons, one of the pledges that I made. Um, I, I don't know if you remember five years ago, those of you that were here, I said that we're gonna continue to celebrate this as we move forward even if it's just me by myself. Even if it's, I, I can come, you know, come up, say a couple words, then I'll sit down, give me a round of applause, come back and do the same thing. We're gonna continue to do this because this man here didn't have to do what he did. He could have done what 99% of us do, which is nothing. He could have just said, I see injustice everywhere, I see all these issues but I'm a pastor, I have a grand old life. I don't have to do any of this stuff. But he chose not to because he felt that it was important that somebody must stand up and must say something when they see injustice. And that's what he did. And so that his memory will never, never be forgotten, some of us have pledged to continue to live his legacy. I was fortunate enough um, uh, last year to go to Atlanta there was a Democratic Party something going on in Atlanta. And I had the pleasure of meeting uh, John Lewis, uh, who's now not doing very well with stage four cancer. Uh, but just sitting there in awe in front of this, and mind you, he's a little guy. I mean, I, I, I look like a, well, I'm a little <coughs> chunky, but, uh, but I look like a, an NFL lineman next to this little horse jockey basically. That's how short and how small he is. But the, to realize that this man has such an aura around him, you know, such, a, such power. And the fact that he sat there, we sat, talked for a long time, just me and him, and talking about his days of hanging around with MLK and the struggles that they went through back in the days when the rest of us were just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, it gives you a sense of their work must not be forgotten for what they did to this country. America is a great country. America has always been a great country. But we must continue to live um, the dreams of the people that went ahead of, ahead of us, those that went through the struggles that they went through. I never went through it. And none of the children sitting here are going through this. But we have individuals that actually have gone through those, uh, those struggles. 
And it's important for all of us to make sure that, that those struggles are never forgotten, that we come together, as Bob said, as one community to, to fight for justice for every single person in this community. And if we make a pledge to continue to do this, the memory of uh, Dr. King will live on in every single one of us. So I want to thank all of you for coming out and making sure that I'm not doing this by myself because it would be kind of embarrassing, but I'm glad you're all here. And I, I pledge to continue to do this for as long as I'm allowed to in this great earth of ours. And I ask you all to come back again next year. I mean, we know what the date's gonna be, so let's just set it up. We'll go to the breakfast on Saturday for the NAACP, and then we'll come back here and do the, uh, the children's program in this church. The church will be around, you should all be around, and I'll be uh, happy if you came and helped me celebrate Martin Luther King Day 2021. So thank you all for coming. I want to ask God to continue to bless us and continue to bless our great city. Thank you. And I just want to ask you all to give Angela a round of applause as well. Should I say it? Should I say it? You know, Angela got married last year, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's a, <clears throat> a, little, a little something going on here. And she got out, she got out of bed, and she was here, came in, and like a, a true soldier, is here to help us celebrate with the young people at Martin Luther King. Thank you, Angela. You know, it's, um, it really is an honor uh, every year to be asked to be the MC of this event. And um, this event holds a special place in my heart. This is the fifth annual year, and this is the fifth annual year that I'm the MC. So I just want to thank you for always asking me. It's an honor. And like Moses said, next year, I pledge I will be here again next year. So let's make sure that we're all here next year. Yes? Yes? Good. As we begin to transition with our program um, onto refreshments and music, before we begin that, I'd like to call up uh, Father Joaquin Furtado Garcia to just give a final blessing. And so uh, I'd like to say just a couple words about him. So he has just joined us from Cape Verde. So his English this year is not, it's, it's getting there. But, so, he won't say many words in English this year. But, as he's gonna be uh, with us next year, I'm taking it easy on you this year. So next year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait for a couple of words in English, no? Okay, let me <laughs> He agrees, okay. Can I have a round of applause for him? Father Joaquin would just like for everybody to please rise as he gives the final blessing. O Senhor esteja convosco. Abençoe-vos Deus Todo-Poderoso, Pai, Filho e Espírito Santo. Amém. So our program, please, guys, don't leave. Our program is going to continue. We have food here sponsored by Brockton's very own VCNP Supermarket. And we have um, some music by Volcano di Fogo. So listen up, have some food, hang out, and give me one second. <laughs>
Well, today is, uh, of course, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, it's a great day in the city of Brockton. Uh, this is the fifth annual. Uh, it's for the children, uh, the young boys and girls, to understand what the legacy of Dr. King means and how we can equate that to present day. And what I said today during my speech is, we need to come together as one to better Brockton. The key word is together. Uh, if we are a unified uh, group working together, positive, positive change is gonna happen. Uh, and I'm just so proud to be here today as the mayor of the city of Brockton with my city council colleagues, school committee, uh, and Bishop Branch from Southeastern Regional. So um, the biggest thing is to express to the young boys and girls what Dr. King's legacy means, uh, what his words meant, and what positive change in civil rights uh, is equated to Dr. King and others, such as John Lewis and Julian Bond. So um, just a good day in the city champions, and I'm proud to be here as the mayor. I think it's, 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 it's important because, first of all, uh, he's not just a historic figure. Uh, his life and ultimately his, his uh, giving of his life via the assassination um, shows what one man can do. Uh, he created a ripple effect that truly, truly created change in this, in this uh, nation. Uh, and it carries forward here in the local community known as Brockton. You know, we're a diverse, beautiful community, um, and we have such different cultures and ethics that come together. Um, and there's bright, heads, bright days ahead for the city of Brockton. Uh, and what, again, what I wanted to just tell the boys and girls um, what Dr. King means to me personally, and what he means to society as a whole. I just, I just hope that everybody uh, thinks about coming here next year, St. Edith Stein. Uh, it's an annual event. Next year will be the sixth annual, and again, it's hosted by uh, the Cape Verdean Association and my dear friend on the city council, Council Lodge Moses Rodriguez. And uh, it's really for the the boys and girls of the city of Brockton. So please uh, come here, and we'll see you next year. Well, we're celebrating the fifth annual uh, MLK here in the city of Brockton, meaning the uh, the Martin Luther King birthday day celebration here in the city of Brockton. Well, when you uh, when you look at the uh, the work that uh, Dr. King put in uh, for the good of this country, I mean he uh, revolutionized the uh, the thinking of this country to a point where today, somewhere around 50 something years later, it, it still um, sounds very clear to the to the you know to the residents and the citizens of this country. Uh, he's someone, as I said earlier, that didn't have to do this. He chose to do this for the good of this country, and, um, and I think it's important for, uh, for some of us that are uh, still living and surviving uh, to continue to carry on his, we will never be able to do what he did, uh, but at least carry on his words and his wishes and his dreams of someday making this country a country that uh, treats everybody the same basic way. Well, uh, when you look at someone who didn't have to do any of this stuff, it gives you a sense of what am I doing? You know, looking at pointing fingers at your own self and say, if he did all of that and he didn't have to do this, what am I doing uh, to, to basically take on even a small percentage of that work uh, to bring the, uh, this, this country forward? And, and that's the sense of, um, of duty that some of us should uh, and will have as we move forward because, uh, again, the guy didn't have to do anything, any of the stuff that he did other than the fact that he felt that it was important for um, uh, an American to step up and help those that couldn't help themselves. It's put, it's put out by the Cape Verdean Association in Brockton in, in collaboration with St. Edith Stein Parish. I mean, the church has made this space available for us uh, without question. Uh, and we will continue to do that. It doesn't take a great deal of effort to put it up, to put it out, I mean, to put it on. Uh, we've got, you know, Vicente's uh, groceries that helps us with some food. Uh, BCA, who has always come forward and helped us with uh, both promoting it and also bringing these images, images uh, to the residents of the community. And we are going to continue to do this. And I ask everybody to. Um, that's watching us at this time to mark it in your calendars. We'll be back here again next year on the day itself, uh, celebrating um, the sixth the sixth anniversary, and we will continue to do that because it's uh, we owe it to the young kids and the young people in this community to understand uh, who Martin Luther King was. Again, I just want to thank everybody that came. There was a ton of kids here. There was a ton of people here that uh, helped us uh, usher 2020 in a positive way. And I hope that they'll all be back um, on the on the on January of next year to help us uh, celebrate uh, this great event that we have.